work here um, in mind it's from 2010. Um, I thought I'd start by just talking a little bit about my background and how I got into doing what I did. Um, I didn't actually go to art college, so I had quite an unconventional route into the art world. I um, studied English at college and then went on to to try, I, I actually was, ended up managing a bar and restaurant in East London, but I had I'd always had very creative urges, I'd always made things my entire life, and um, continued to try to use all my spare time making things. Um, I tried a bit of photography and sculpture and drawing, and nothing really st stuck with me somehow. It didn't, um, never quite felt like my medium. Um, and it was, it was when I was trying to actually buy taxidermy, I, I realised that I had a very specific idea in mind of how I wanted it to look. And I couldn't find it like that whenever I'd look online and try and find people who were selling it. I couldn't ever find quite what I wanted. So eventually, by a process of elimination, it occurred to me that actually I would have to make it myself. So I started reading books about it. Um, it's a very difficult thing to teach yourself from, from guides, because often they're just made by amateur taxidermists who draw Celtic pen on you know, how to skin a bird. It's not an easy thing to follow. So I found someone up in Scotland who could teach taxidermy. Um, he's a taxidermist for 40 years standing. And I went and had just a day's lesson with him originally, but I was really, really hooked. And I came back to London and I practiced and practiced and would go back and see him and show him my work and he would critique it. Um, and slowly I started getting better at it because it is suddenly in Britain, I know, I know in America it's actually quite a common practice, but in Britain it's, it's very unusual. And I, I certainly had never met a taxidermist in my life before. So it wasn't somewhere, I, there's no colleges that teach it, it wasn't somewhere that I could just go and pick up tips from people easily. Um, and it's very much something that you have to practice until you get any good at it. And I knew straight away that I was never interested in being a traditional taxidermist. I, much as I love the traditional um, mounts where they mimic the natural environment of the animals that you see in, in natural history museums, it wasn't something I felt I could add anything to really. I felt like there was plenty of people doing it very adequately already. And I wanted, well, I saw taxidermy as being a medium, just as clay is a medium, or marble to other sculptures, and I felt like it was quite an untapped medium in, in terms of contemporary art. Um, there are certainly some well-known artists who've used it, but they generally will use it uh, as one material, or they'll use many materials. As in England, we use famously Damien Hirst, and um, a, a German artist called Thomas Grunfeld, who's used it quite regularly. But they also use other materials and they don't do it themselves. And I felt that I wanted to try to bring it up to date somehow um, and to, to juxtapose <coughs> what, people, what many people see as being quite a Victorian craft with much more modern elements. Um, and this particular work is actually from 2010, so it's not so representative of what, what I'm doing right now, but it was. Um, it was part of quite an important evolution in my work, where I, I moved from making quite small tableau to much larger scale pieces. Like, well, when I realised that I was getting these opportunities to show in art galleries, I wanted to make sure that my work could kind of command a larger space. And I was reading a lot about flight and about man's interest in flight and, and the fact that we over years and years, long before we invented aeroplanes, we were always trying to fly. We were always we, we're, we're earthbound animals, and yet we've always tried to go into the skies and we'll deep sea dive and we'll get out of our element somehow. I was reading about the men who strap uh, balloons to their lawn chairs and float across the sky, <coughs> and people who throw themselves off mountains with a, with a, a hastily fashioned wings strapped to their backs. And I found uh, this really touching diagram that someone had um, drawn in the, I think it was in the 1700s, uh, and it was of a cage, a little like this, it was more like a carriage with a human being sitting in the middle, being held aloft by birds. And it was his design for a flying machine, and it's very easy for us to laugh at that now just for the benefit of hindsight, but you would have assumed at that time that, that you could uh, harness the power of flight from birds. And I, I wanted to make this piece almost as a sort of homage to him. I, I, first of all, I actually made a larger version of this with vultures and pigeons and canaries and uh, almost like a whole bouquet of birds. And I went on to make some slightly smaller scale flight-based sculptures for a show that I had in London at a gallery called the Portrait of Edison. And it was called Psychopomps, the show, um, which is a word to describe a mythological creature, a winged escort that takes yeah. us from life to death. And the four sculptures that I made for this show were all 
uh, embodiments of that idea. Um, so this one, I, I, I wanted to make the cage almost look blackened and burnt, like it, the idea was a little bit like the sort of phoenix rising from the ashes, like something, something transforming from death into life again. Uh, and I chose orange birds because I because they look quite flame-like from a distance, sort of flicking up above the cage. Um, and since that work, I have gone on to um, continue to sort of evolve in my practice and, and with taxidermy. And I am currently working on um, a body of work with snakes, which are much more abstract sculptures. Um, I find with the body of a snake you have much more malleability, I suppose, and you can really sculpt with it in a way that I, I didn't manage to do so well with, with birds and mammals. And uh, that kind of brings me up to date.